feels weird and slimy. You want some water? I have a little, little tea here. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Tyler from Crafting Taylor. In this episode of Under the Radar, I'm going over a King Seiko high beat. The reference is 45027001. This is an absolutely gorgeous watch with incredible finishing. So I'm really excited to get into this one with you. So most of you Seiko aficionados out there probably know this already, but for everybody else, uh, I think it'd be fun to touch on this a bit. During the 60s and 70s, Seiko utilized two different factories to produce their watches. They had the Sua factory, which produced Grand Seiko, and then they had the Daini factory that produced King Seiko. And they used these two factories to kind of have intercompany competition with the objective that the competition would promote progress, with the end goal being, you know, the best possible watches made. I think it's kind of interesting that King Seiko ultimately didn't make it as far as Grand Seiko did because Grand Seiko is now a massive brand. They make amazing watches. They're very beautifully made. And, you know, going back to it, King Seiko is kind of their inner company rival. The Daini factory is in Japanese. I think it translates to second or secondary. Um, so it's kind of interesting that they're like the secondary factory. King Seiko didn't make it as far as Grand Seiko did, obviously. But regardless of that, King Seiko did produce extremely high quality and very impressive timepieces during its time of a pretty short production between 1961 and 1975. Like Grand Seiko, King Seiko primarily focused on producing extremely impressive movements and with unbelievable finishing on their watches. This watch in particular is like absolutely stunning. I love how it wears on wrist. I love the finishing of it. I think it's an incredibly beautiful watch, um, especially for its price point. In this era, when I see Grand Seikos and King Seikos, I kind of see them as one and the same, except for the King Seikos are a little bit more weird, a little bit more quirky just because they weren't around as long. Not many people know of King Seiko as much as Grand Seiko is because of the prestige that the brand carries today. So with that kind of a cool backstory, I wanna get into this watch specifically. This watch comes with its original buckle. I really like the lizard leather on this strap. It looks very appropriate for this style of watch and the lizard material is just very comfortable. As soon as you put it on your wrist, it feels like it fits perfectly. The way that this case is designed is extremely impressive, especially for, you know, just a Seiko in this era. I love how the bezel kind of flows with the case and the high shine mirror polish still has a very strong angles. I love the way it looks. I love how geometrical it looks. It's a very masculine watch while still feeling dressy and still feeling, you know, like a universal watch that you can wear. The winding mechanism is very satisfying. Um, it's easy to wind on wrist. It has a pretty large crown for this style of, I, I would say, dressier piece. Original crown that's signed KS, that's also very cool. And the dial is just a beautiful sunburst that is very subtle. Unless you catch it in the light, you can't really notice the sunbursting. So it's like a matte sunburst finish that is really nice with the, the black enamel inlay. It's just one of the most classic designs, but taking those classic designs and kind of flipping them on themselves, instead of doing something that's overly simple, they did something that's overly beautiful, in my opinion. All in all, it's, it's a gorgeous piece. Um, I love how original this one is, uh, and I love how it looks on wrist. It's just one of the more handsome watches ever produced, especially at this price point. Lastly, and probably most importantly, is I wanna to touch on the movement a little bit. This is the 4502A movement produced by King Seiko. And like the dial says, it is a high beat movement. It's 36,000 beats per hour, which is pretty incredible. When you put this thing on a time graph, it just ticks so fast. Um, and they're generally just extremely accurate. So not only is this watch beautiful on the outside, it's extremely impressive on the inside as well. Grand Seiko today still produces high beat movements that beat at 36,000 BPH. So to have something like this from this era is so cool. 
I love the look of this watch. I love the price point of this watch. I think it's, it's just an incredible piece. But these kind of funky, very impressive watches, I think rival some of the finishing of Patek Philippe or AP dress watches of this era and definitely give you a more unique design than something that's just circular and Calatrava-like. Not that those designs are wrong, but something different is also always nice. This specific example is for sale at the time of recording. It's on our website at craftandtailored.com. So be sure to check that out if you wanna learn a little bit more about it. So with that, I wanna say thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. You can follow us on Instagram at craftandtailored. And if you have watch questions, we are here to help. You can drop us a line at info and craftandtailored.com. Thanks, we'll see you in the next one. All around with Still very sharp angles. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Didn't mean to uh, do that.